Hi, I'm Gracie. And I'm Cameron. And join us as we go Inside, inside the Capitol. and talk to Catherine Nailing. Hey Catherine. Hey, how are y'all today? Good. Good. Thanks for joining us and coming in the lobby. I wanted to show you this is the original ticket machine from when the Capitol was an actual theater. And being the age that I am, I remember coming to movies at the Capitol. Um, this is the ticket from 1946 and it was $1.50. Now, $1.50 for a ticket in 1946 means that this must have been a very special movie because tickets were usually much less than that. We also have some of the advertisement that was used for the Capitol in 1935, and it shows the different films that were showing during that week of March. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but because there was no television, there were um, news segments between the movies. And particularly during World War II, it was a way for people in Union City to learn about what was going on in Europe and Asia and Africa and everywhere that um, young men who were from this area were serving during World War II. So Catherine, why don't you tell us some about these plaques up here? Oh, sure. These are some plaques to um, recognize people that gave monetary donations and people that just put their time and efforts into making the Masquerade Theater what it is today. This was a movie place and so in 1991 it actually closed down and so people from individuals from Union City along with different grants worked and decided to make it a place for play production. And so in about 1996, all the deals were done and they started to begin to work um, on getting it re renovated and looking the way that it does now, or for the majority of the way it looks now. Um, we recognize Miss Gail Latimer, um, Mr. and Miss Glover, also um, up here at the top, Miss Kathleen Elam. They were some of the, the people who were in the dress circle, which was one of the major um, do individual donors. We have Mr. Ralph Gillum, who the initial fly system, which is a system that's used behind this, the stage, behind the curtains, was donated um, in his honor. Mr. Mike Dickerson, who was known as a music man, the um, musical equipment was given in honor of him. Miss Saki Doss, who taught most of us ballet and tap. The curtain system was donated in honor of her. And then Mr. Marion Rydell, who was the band director in Union City for many, many years, all the information, the, the equipment, and all the things that are underneath the stage, which is called the pit, was the orchestra pit. So all of that was um, given in honor of him. Now this is a listing of the original board members who got all these projects and grants and worked so hard to get this going. And you'll notice that, um, one of the ladies that is on here, Miss Melanie Taylor Hollis, is still very active in the theater day, and she happens to be on the board still today. Actually, she's here in the lobby with us today with Miss Allison Butner. Hi, girls. Hey. hey. So, Melanie, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the theater? Well, the building itself. The Capitol Theater as we know it was erected in 1927 and the first show charged 25 cents a ticket and kids got in for 10 cents. Uh, <clears throat> through the years this uh, building has been a different things. It's been a true theater. It was turned into a movie theater then it was split and turned into a double movie theater. And that's when uh, it was abandoned and Masquerade Theater came in and bought it in 1994. 1994. And uh, a couple of years later, we started the, renova the renovations, and that included lobby, the house, and the front of the building. Uh, a lot of uh, things were torn out and gotten rid of the stage itself, was redone. Um, a lot of money and, and time and effort went into that revamping of this space. 
One of the, the coolest things I think about the Capitol Theater is the front sign. And when Mass Gray Theater bought it, uh, a local sign company completely donated their time and resources and repainted it. And then we added the neon back to it. So it's really cool at night when you're driving down First Street and to see those neon lights. It makes me think back to the old days. Now, the front of the building, a fun fact, as the girls would say, is that when Masquerade Theater first bought the building, the lobby was actually extended out about six feet and it had all this little bitty greenish blue tile on it. But uh, Masquerade Theater knocked all of that out and so it was just random brick across the front. But we, a few years ago, the board, we applied for a Main Street grant and so in order to make the brick more uniform, we decided to paint it all black. And the reason we did that was because of the front of this book, a painting that your dad did for the theater. Yes, he did a watercolor based on a, an old photograph. And I think a lot of it is what he remembered as a boy coming to this uh, theater. But we kind of wanted to, um, to match the black and the orange in this in this painting to the front of our uh, present day Masquerade Theater. We also, um, when we first bought the theater, this lobby, like I said, was extended about six feet out and it had been made larger so that more concessions could be sold when this was a movie theater. But um, it just had some damage to it, so they figured they'd just go ahead and shorten it to what it was originally. And they came in and if you're in here, I would take some time and look at all the pictures that we have. You might recognize some people, you might not, but um, we're, we're trying to let people see a lot of previous shows with the pictures and just to kind of relive the memories, I guess. Thank you for watching episode one of Inside the Capitol. Join us for episode two as we go inside the house.